G'day, Jason the Middle Aged Gear Junkie here. If you've ever wondered if there's much of a difference between Phaser and Univibe, well, you clicked on the right video. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, please subscribe because that really does help my channel out. All right, let's do it. Here's my clean sound. I'm running through my Fender Deluxe Reverb and my Vox AC30. So it's very clean, there's a little bit of reverb from both amplifiers, but no breakup. Before I start comparing the differences between these two effects, I think we need to establish first what a phaser sounds like and what a vibe sounds like. So I have all of my phasers and vibes that I currently own on the floor in front of me, and I also have two pedals that were lent to me for this video, which is the Analog Man modded Phase 90 and the Analog Man modded Phase 45, which were lent to me by the guys from Pass Effects. So thank you very much for lending those out, guys. So I'm gonna start with Vibe because it won the game of Paper, Rock, Scissors. I have the MXR Uni Vibe, the Full Tone Deja Vibe, stereo and I also have the Jim Dunlop Rotor Vibe. So I'm going to start off with the Uni Vibe. And you hear that lovely sort of uh, watery throbbing sort of sound that you get which is really typical of a Vibe. Now the typical controls that you'll find on a pedal like this are speed, which controls obviously how fast that throbbing is happening. We have depth, which is how much of the vibe is being mixed with your dry signal. So obviously the more depth you add, the thicker your sound becomes. Some vibes have a level or volume control. Now this is because a lot of the times with modulation effects, a lot of people feel as though once they switch them on that their volume drops. So this gives you the ability to attenuate any sort of perceived volume loss. So most vibes, including the original uni vibe, have a switch on it saying chorus slash vibrato. Now, to understand what this does, you have to understand partially how the effect works. So when your guitar goes into the effect, it splits your signal in two. One of those signals is modulated and the other one stays dry or clean. When those two signals are mixed together at the end, that's when we get the uni vibe sound. By hitting this switch, what's going to happen is it's going to kill the dry signal and I'll only be left with the vibrato signal. When it comes to using univibes, I like to have them set at a fairly slow speed, but if I'm using them in vibrato mode, I like to have it at a much faster speed to get a sort of Leslie type sound, and it sounds really great for comping chords. Here's the Deja vibe.
So if you listen to that with headphones on, you'll hear it panning from one speaker to the other, and it's such a cool sound. Now, you might have noticed that the Deja Vibe doesn't seem to have as much sort of boomy bottom end, and that's because it has a switch on there that says vintage or modern, and I've got it in the modern setting. If I was to switch it down to vintage, it would sound more like the MXR version. I happen to like this pedal more in modern mode, but that's just me. Also, you'll notice that I've had to turn the speed almost half the way up on this one to get to a similar speed uh, as the MXR, and that's because this one is capable of much slower speeds. Now, a lot of people like their vibes at a slow speed, so one that's capable of getting that really slow, you know, very calm, watery sound, something like this is really great. Now also, the, the speed knob da is down here in the corner so that I can adjust it with my foot. Now that's handy, but it's not as cool as the rotor vibe. Now you notice with the rotor vibe, it doesn't have a speed control. It's got an intensity control on the side, and it's also got the chorus slash vibrato switch at the back, but the speed is controlled like you would use a wah pedal. So it's got a treadle where you can really sort of adjust your speed backwards and forwards. And for me, this is the most expressive out of the three for that reason. A popular way to use Vibe is to pair it with a fuzz. Now, uh, a lot of people like to use a fuzz face like I'm about to do. Uh, if you do, put the fuzz face in front of the Vibe because fuzz faces do not play well uh, with other pedals being in front of them, even the silicon ones. So um, I've got mine in front and this is what it sounds like. All right, let's move on to phaser. So on the floor in front of me, I have three different types of phasers. These all uh, originally came out in the 70s. There is an MXR Phase 90 script. Uh, this is a reissue. I have an original 70s uh, Boss PH1 silver screw. Uh, and then I have the Past Effects uh, Fox Foot Phaser Deluxe. Now this is based on a 70s phaser called the Fox Foot Phaser, which is no longer made. So this is a, a modern reproduction of that pedal. So let's start off with the Phase 90. So it's super easy to use, it only has a speed control, so if you set it to slower settings you get that really sort of nice slow movement in your sound and then if you speed it up it gives it a lot of character and gives it almost sort of Leslie type sound. Uh, but let's see what other phases sound like, so let's check out the Boss PH1. So 
So as you can hear, they sound quite similar. The main difference here is that uh, I have a depth control so I can choose how much of that phaser is in the signal. Again, it kind of gets those Leslie type sounds. I'm going to slow it down. So as you can hear, these two pedals are quite similar. They have a very smooth uh, sweep up and down the, their four stage range. Uh, the PH1 is a little bit more uh, flexible because it has the depth knob there. But in the early 80s, Boss added a resonance control to their phases uh, and they, they brought out what they called the PH1R, which was basically a modded version of the PH1. And I used to own one of these, but I don't have it anymore. But I do have a PH2, which came out a few years later. And this also has the resonance control. And the resonance control basically adds, feeds back part of the signal into itself. And it creates a much more interesting and distinctive phaser sound. That now has a lot more pronounced character than either of the first two pedals I showed you. So I'm just going to play around with that resonance knob so you can really hear what it does. You often hear the word stages mentioned when people talk about phases. Now, without going into technical terms, the more stages that a phaser uses, the wider the frequency sweep. Now, the phase 90 and the PH1 and even the PH2 in mode 1 are all four-stage phases. Now, four-stage phases are the norm amongst phases, but they aren't all like that. If you were to put the PH2 into mode two, it would go from being a four-stage phaser to being a 10-stage phaser with a much larger frequency sweep. Lastly, I have the Past Effects Fox Foot Phaser Deluxe. Now, this is based on the Fox Foot Phaser, which came out in the 70s, which was used by Brian May. But this is a sort of modern take on that original circuit. So the original Fox Foot Phaser was a six-stage phaser. This one gives you the option between six or 10-stage phasing. As you can hear with all knobs at noon, it's a bit more throaty than either the others that we've heard so far. That's on six stage phasing. Thank you. 
It seems to have a bit more mid-range than the other two, which I think lends itself a bit better to having drive with it. So out of the three of them, I, th I think that this one sounds best with drive. So even with those extra stages, you still get a very smooth sweep up and down. I'm a huge fan of using a phaser with a delay pedal. So I'm just gonna put on a digital delay and use it with the PH2 here. Using a phaser with a distortion is a really popular application for this pedal. Uh, the most notable user of the MXR Phaser 90 was actually Eddie Van Halen who used it in the Eruption solo and for other songs as well. And it just gives your sound a bit of movement, especially if you're playing repeated lines. Now I'm going to compare the two effects. So I'm going to use one of each of these pedals. So I'm going to use the uh, MXR Phase 90 because let's face it, that's the one that everybody knows. And in keeping with the same brand, I'll use the MXR Univibe to represent vibe. Now I'm going to play the same piece of music using both effects. Both of them are going to be running in front of a drive pedal, uh, which will be the Marshall Blues Breaker. <laughs> So as you could hear, these effects are similar, but they're also quite different at the same time. I would say that the Vibe has more individual character. It's more noticeable than a phaser. Um, phasers can be a bit more subtle. Uh, they tend to sweep very evenly, uh, whereas Vibes, the, uh, the waveform of the Vibe is not as smooth. It's a little bit more abrupt, and that's what gives us that sort of throbbing sound when you have it on. Phases are great for creating a bit of movement in your tone and giving it a little bit more dimension. Uh, you know, it sweeps very evenly within its uh, stage range, whether it be a four or a six or a 10 stage phaser. So obviously the higher that number, the more sweep you get. Vibes, on the other hand, don't sweep, they throb. While a phaser creates this uh, very consistent and smooth waveform, a vibes waveform is a lot more dramatic in its peaks and troughs. So it's a little bit more unpredictable to play. Often people say you need to play to a vibe. And what that means is you need to adjust your playing to make it sound good with a vibe. So for example, that piece that I just played, I wrote that while playing the vibe. Now, if I was to add vibe to something it already pre-written, it probably won't sound as good as the phaser.
As I said at the start, I have a couple of pedals here that have been lent to me, which are the Analog Man modded Phase 90 and the Analog Man modded Phase 45. Now, the Phase 90 and the Phase 45 have both been modded to take a power jack because they were both originally designed just to work off battery. They've both uh, been given the uh, True Bypass mod and they've also uh, both been given an LED. The Phase 90 has a volume pot. So as I said before, sometimes people complain with phases uh, and other modulation pedals that when you click it on, you tend to get a bit of a volume drop. So this volume knob here will allow me to attenuate any perceived volume loss. In standard mode, the Phase 45 is a more subtle phaser than the Phase 90 because it's only a two-stage phaser, so it doesn't have a very large sweep. But there's a switch that's been put on there to put it into vibe mode. So this actually can go from being a phaser to being a two-stage vibe, which is very interesting. I'd like to thank Verley and Nick from Past Effects for sending these two pedals out for me to try. Thanks very much, guys. So when it comes to vibe, I feel as though the waveform has much larger peaks and troughs. Uh, it's, it's much more dramatic than uh, phaser, which seems to be a lot smoother. Uh, therefore, I, th I think that vibe really lends itself to expressive playing uh, because I feel as though it's probably a little bit more of an expressive effect. At slow speeds, it has that beautiful watery type sound, and you know most most well-known vibe players usually use vibe at a slow to medium speed. At faster speeds, I still think it's useful. Uh, however, I reckon it sounds best when using them with chords. The Deja Vibe and the Rotor Vibe were my favourites uh, for different reasons. So the Deja Vibe has stereo mode and this effect in stereo is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I really like that sort of modern vintage switch because I feel in modern mode it's more useful to me. Uh, the Rotor Vibe on the other hand, it has the treadle and that is super cool uh, for you know swelling in speed changes and things like that. Uh, my main criticism of it is that, that it doesn't go slow enough. I would, I would like to actually slow it down a bit more than it goes. So, But they're absolutely a brilliant effect and you should get your hands on one and, and have a go if you are interested. Now phases to my ear are smoother and probably a little bit more subtle than vibes. Uh, the way that they modulate the signal is a lot more consistent uh, as opposed to being really dramatic with a vibe. Now uh, I think the phase 45, the phase 90 and even the Boss PH1 were all fairly subtle phases and th that's great but I actually really like the phases that have the resonance or feedback control uh, like the uh, PH2 and the Fox Foot phaser. Those effects, I think, are much more pronounced and it gives your tone uh, just this really cool alien-like character. I think adding a phaser to your tone helps to give you a bit of movement and a bit more dimension. So if you enjoyed this video or you got something out of it, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Remember, you can go to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store. There's two links down in the description below. Find the one that best suits you. And if by buying a t-shirt or something like that, you can really help to support this channel. Uh, you can join the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page and post pictures up of your gear, of your pedal boards, your setup. That'd be great to be able to uh, show that off to the rest of us. Other than that, my name is Jason. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.